Hi. How about tonight? Calgary Tonight News. From now on. Public notice. The Brick is now open 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. Introducing TheBrick.com. The Brick Online is now open. Nobody beats TheBrick.com. Hi, I'm Tom Jackson. Remember the less fortunate this year and give to your local food bank. Credit repair agencies that don't deliver. They're promising that they can affect a change in the credit rating, and that's just something that can't be done for any amount of money. It's no rocket science what we're doing here. Maybe not, but Kimberly Clark blasts in a team of specialists to test adult diapers for Marketplace. You think you've got your life all together. In one second, it's changed completely. How safe are the tires you're driving on this winter? Hello, I'm Jackie Parrott, and welcome to Marketplace. More than 70,000 Canadians go bankrupt every year. Desperate to get back on their feet, some have turned to companies that promise they can clean up credit ratings. But instead of having your credit repaired, you might just end up with one more bill to pay. Jim Nunn investigates. In an age of consumerism and easy credit, everyone owes money. Many find themselves deep in debt with a black mark on their credit rating. A black mark that just won't go away. Some people turn to companies that promise a quick fix. Attention, is bad credit causing you a problem? You sign and that's it. You sign your money away. Nothing will be done. No service will be provided. Nothing at all. All they care about, get your money first. And this is it. They're nowhere to be found. Daniel Samfir regrets the day he first heard of credit repair. The first person who came in my house was uh, Todd Gnish, an agent working for a Fresh Start Credit Repair. The gentleman promised verbally in front of us, myself, my wife, and uh, my neighbor, George Mokanu, that he will be able to remove this R9 in a period of three months. So I said, that's perfect, excellent. So we'll go along. Zamfir paid his bills on time, except for one from a furniture store. He owed $1,100 for a wall unit. He eventually did pay that bill, but his credit rating still carried an R9, the worst rating short of bankruptcy. I intended with my wife to, to get rid of this R9 because I want to be in good standing with my, uh, my uh, credit file report. So that was uh, what I was looking for, getting rid of this R9. Zamfir paid $699 plus taxes, a total of almost $800 for the service. But in fact, there was no way Nish or anyone else could get rid of his R9. If somebody has something that's of a negative nature on their credit file, the only thing that can change that is time. And it takes six years, generally, for a bad debt to come off of a file. And at that time, it's going to come off regardless of any activity from a credit clinic or any, anyone else. Sheila McCracken of Equifax Canada. This is the main call center here where most of our customer calls come in. Great one PL. This Equifax office is a small part of a huge library of our credit ratings which are very difficult to change. It's very misleading to consumers because they're promising that they can affect a change in the credit rating, and that's just something that can't be done for any amount of money. Have a seat. We wanted to see for ourselves the claims made by credit repair agencies. We set up a hidden camera and invited a salesman from a large Ontario credit repair agency to pitch the product to one of our researchers. Okay, now these are our ongoing services. Mm -hmm. We've been successful in removing bankruptcies, loan defaults, court judgments, um, collections. None, none of your accounts have gone to collection? No. 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 Okay. I took care of it. So, <laughs> and you've never declared bankruptcy? No. Okay. So you can get rid of a bankruptcy? Yeah. That takes the longest. It's the longest process, but we can do it. Wow. I didn't, I didn't even know that could be done. Yeah. As long as it's been longer than a year after it's been discharged. Really? We can remove it. Wow. That's misleading. In rare circumstances, a bankruptcy can be challenged, but only if it should never have been filed in the first place. And the company knows that. Their contract contains no guarantee that a bankruptcy can be removed. But they do promise in writing that you'll get your money back 
if you're not happy. Not a guarantee. Like I said, we guarantee to you in writing that at the end of the 18-month contract period, if we haven't done what we say we do, you get your money back. Less than minus 195. Right. But many credit repair clients tell us they received no service and they couldn't get their money back. What they did discover was that they could have changed any small errors on their credit reports by just asking. Now you're able to do this for yourself and you're able to do this for free, but it's like fixing your own transmission. You could try to do it, but who's to say you would do it properly? In fact, it's a lot easier than fixing your own transmission. They're really not looking out for your best interests. Pauline Simpson used to work for Todd Nish at a company called Renew Credit Services. She left Renew unhappy with the way customers were treated. How would you describe this kind of business? I would say that it's not on the up and up. I would say that it's uh, a form of, of scamming people, of making them believe that they're getting something for money and uh, what their promise that they're getting is not being fulfilled. How much money did you put into the bank for Todd Nish? Uh, it would vary from day to day. Um, there was days where it would be maybe a couple of thousand. There were days where it could maybe be a couple hundred. In the average week? Maybe just under ten thousand. Ten thousand dollars a week? Roughly. For the eight hundred dollars Zamfir paid, he received almost nothing from Fresh Start. He took Fresh Start to small claims court and won a judgment. But so far, he's been unable to collect. It is very important because, first of all, uh, it's money I can spend them for my kids, buying them uh, books, buying them uh, coats, buying them things they really need. Thousands of Canadians have succumbed to the pitch of credit repair sales agents. More than 100 people have complained about them to the government of Ontario within the last two years. That means that millions of dollars have been spent on this service. And the U.S. Federal Trade Commission has put credit repair on its list of the top ten consumer scams. We went looking for the people who sell credit repair. Todd Nish refused to be interviewed. We went to the address on his company's letterhead, but there was no sign of Nish or of Renew Credit. Hello, this is Todd speaking. We did reach Nish by phone. He admits he can't remove an R9 or a bankruptcy from a credit rating unless there has been a mistake. But he suggests he knows loopholes. There, it can only be removed if there's a mistake or proof can't be found. Now, that's how people obviously get off, you know, criminal or civil charges, is that uh, somebody's paperwork, if the, I's, if the I's aren't dotted and the T's aren't crossed, and nobody is prepared to, these are other things, prepared to or can confirm the accuracy, then it is to be either corrected or removed. That's the actual terminology, corrected or removed. When Todd Nish sold the credit repair package to Daniel Samfear, Nish worked for Fresh Start. Fresh Start sold its systems to Francine and Larry Hoffman. The Hoffmans named their new company Absolute Credit Repair. It was their salesman who tried to sell the service to our researcher. Francine and Larry Hoffman also refused to be interviewed, so we went to their office. We're not interested. Can I speak to either of them for a moment? No. Why is that? I don't want to. Is that uh, Francine Hoffman speaking? We did locate a former owner of Fresh Start. Charlie Baker was Todd Nish's boss at Fresh Start. It was Baker Daniel Samfear won a court judgment against. But Samfear hasn't been able to find him. We did. We traced him to Florida where he sells real estate. Baker, too, refused to be interviewed. But he did say he operated in Ontario for just two years. He claims Fresh Start had eight or nine hundred clients, each of whom paid more than $700. We never guaranteed anything, and I mean, I don't know if you've seen a copy of the contract. Let me also go as far as to say, uh, salespeople sometimes puff in what they're talking about. And clients, in a lot of cases, will hear what they want to hear, even though you haven't quite said what they want to hear. What people do want to hear is that their credit can be restored. Pauline Simpson says it can be done. 
the business of repairing your credit, um, fixing information on your report that is incorrect, or settling a payment program with a creditor that you owe money to can be done. But you don't need to pay somebody $900 to do it. If you want to check your credit rating, you can call the country's biggest credit bureaus, Equifax and TransUnion. You can get free help at many nonprofit credit counseling agencies. And be sure to check our website for the do's and don'ts of credit repair. You can find us at cbc.ca slash marketplace. All that glitters is not always real. If you take the stone and put it on the diamond tester, it will give a positive reading for diamonds. Fooled by fakes, Moissanite diamonds, next week on Marketplace. An eight-month-old child in Texas has died because of a defect in an infant swing. The Little Napper swings were recalled in 1997 after three other deaths. The infants become tangled in the harness straps and choke to death. But many of the swings were not returned. The manufacturer is offering $30 cash for owners to come forward to have them repaired. If you have a Little Napper swing, stop using it and call Century Products in Ohio at 1-800-231-1448. Well, tonight under our microscope, something a bit unusual. We set out to check the claims made for Depend Adult Diapers in their TV ad. But instead of running for cover, the Depend executives submitted themselves to trial by camera. The ad says you have a better life with extra protection from Depend. Leading store brands are 50% more likely to leak than Depend. We decided to put this claim to the test, comparing Depend to a leading store brand. We used the exact procedure the manufacturer told us they used. With a water at body temperature, we poured out a measured 165 grams and pressed, allowing 45 seconds for the whole test. Depend did not leak, but neither did the other brand. We did this test several times. Then, to our surprise, the manufacturer, Kimberly Clark Corporation in Dallas, Texas, actually offired to do the test in front of our cameras. Very kind, nice to meet you. Jack and Karen. Hi. They flew up their director of corporate communications from Dallas and two other key executives. In from Wisconsin, that's right. Yeah. I, I'm the associate marketing director on the brand, and Core is our senior research scientist. You're going to a lot of work for us here. Uh, yes, we do. This was unprecedented in our experience, and it was obviously pretty important in theirs, spending thousands to get here with their own camera to keep the record straight. This is a multi-million dollar business at stake. Your product? Here. We supplied the products and brought the same packages we had tested. We figured if they were prepared to do this in front of our camera, they were virtually certain of the outcome. So when they poured out the 165 grams of body temperature water, waited 45 seconds and pressed, the store brand leaked. And the Depend didn't. Well, there's no leakage out of this product. But how do I know for sure that you're putting the same pressure on each one? I can let you do it yourself if you want to. One full rotation. Okay. So they showed me how to do it, exerting about five kilos of pressure. For Translates into about half a pound per square inch, which is on average what the human body exerts on the product. When I did the pressing, tiny bit, the store brand leaked, but very little. Probably. Depend okay. was dry. Leading store brands are 50% more likely to leak than Depend. And the model used in the commercial, was she specially trained to put the pressure on? Yeah, we trained her all morning with a skill to have the same pressure every time when she would push it. Well, why did we have to bring you in? They have to bring you in rather than just anybody here could have shown it to us. Uh, they could have done it. I mean, I could have trained them in, even through the telephone. I mean, it's not that, it's no rocket science what we're doing here. But there was a special technique that made the difference between this and our test, in which the store brand didn't leak at all. First, they pour all the liquid in the center, with the diaper held up so it pools more in the center. That's where they put most of the absorbent material and depend. Now, is there a trick to holding it? I mean, are you specially no, trained no, to hold no, it? No, it's essentially how, you, how it will be worn. Second, there's a lot of pressure on the fold, which wouldn't occur naturally. And after all this, it turns out the claim about 50% more likely to leak isn't based on this test at all. No, no, that's done on consumer testing. That's uh, on a consumer testing? Yes. We, we go out and we have just regular consumers use our products, and then they return it, 
can we see and they fill in a questionnaire whether it leaked or not. A successful use test by real people, if it is valid, might be more convincing in an ad than this kind of thing. But all in all, these fellows can breathe a sigh of relief and go home to headquarters. They went under our microscope and survived. It's that time of year again to start equipping your car for treacherous winter driving. So if you're shopping for winter tires, here's some important information you'll need before getting behind the wheel. Brace yourselves. This is what's ahead for most Canadian motorists. Four months of snow and ice and spinning tires. Now is the time to choose the right tires to help you stick to those slippery roads. But which are the right tires? The tires I have are fine, they're all season. My car has better performance with the winter tires in there. Do you know what kind of tires you're using? They're all season. What are you going to do in winter? They're all season. These days, most Canadian motorists buy one set of all-season radial tires and stick with them all year round. It's the convenient choice, maybe the least expensive choice. But is it the best choice for bad weather? It was a kind of a blustery day all day. Not too bad, but the roads were wet, and about 5 o'clock, quarter after 5, they just iced over. It was Christmas Eve, and Elaine Frimmer was driving home after visiting friends in Barrie, Ontario. And as soon as I hit the top of the hill, the car started to slide. And I'm trying so hard to pump the brake gently to stop this car and pulling to the left for all I'm worth. And this car is still going to the right. There was just no, no other option. I was going where this car wanted to go. Elaine's car missed the turn and shot through the intersection into the telephone pole on the far side. Luckily, no one was seriously hurt. What kind of tires were on your car that night? All season radials. No snow tires? No snow tires. Why is that? With all season radials, you're not supposed to need snow tires. So the advertisements say. Even if it's not precisely what they say, it's the impression consumers can get from ads like this one. Plus Michelin confidence in most driving conditions. Because you don't just cover a lot of miles, you cover a lot of weather. Winter is one of the worst seasons for traffic fatalities on Canadian highways. There were three occupants in the southbound van going to Vancouver. They were all taken to Squamish General Hospital, but released. The uh, lone female occupant of the Toyota Tercel was rushed to the Squamish General Hospital and pronounced dead on arrival there. People don't think it's ever going to happen to them. And then one night when the police knock at your door, you think you've got your life all together. In one second, it's changed completely and forever. For Diane Hardwin of Richmond, B.C., the knock on the door came just before Christmas, 1994. The driver of that blue Tercel was her daughter, Jennifer Jones. Jennifer was driving north from Squamish to her job at the popular ski resort at Whistler. The highway where Jennifer died is called the Sea to Sky Highway because it rises from sea level into the mountains through all kinds of treacherous weather. It's a notorious killer, so dangerous that local officials pay extra attention to highway safety. For years, the Sea to Sky Highway Safety Committee, comprising the RCMP, the provincial government, and the Insurance Corporation of British Columbia, has worked to make this road safer. That's meant spot checks on the road to make sure drivers have appropriate tires. The inquest into Jennifer Jones' death became a focal point for some of the committee's concerns. In particular, they raised questions about the appropriateness of all-season tires for conditions like this. When a consumer buys an all-season radio tire, they sometimes think that they're buying a tire that will perform under all weather conditions. And this is not, in fact, what happens. Peter Gordon conducted the coroner's investigation. He says the first thing the inquest jury learned is that the term all-season can be misleading. Gordon says some all-season tires may be just as good as some bona fide winter tires, but many are not. This M&S stamp on the sidewall should be a clue, Gordon says. It stands for mud and snow, and it's supposed to mean these tires have been specially designed for driving in bad weather. But when you talk to the experts, 
M&S turns out to be just as misleading as all season. This tire is labeled mud and snow, and by no stretch of the imagination would you ever consider this to be a snow tire, a tire that you would want to drive through a snowstorm in. John Gain was head of research for the Insurance Corporation of British Columbia when the inquest took place. How does the owner know that those tires are not appropriate to be driving around in that, in that kind of a snowstorm? Gain met with tire retailers to try to decipher the terms commonly used to describe tires which are sold for winter. What we've learned from the meetings with the tire dealers is that there's a number of labels that you find on tires that are really not all that meaningful. Real winter tires and the skimpiest all-season tires can both get the M&S stamp. And that's dangerously confusing, Gain says. The heart of the matter is that consumers really can't depend on the labeling on the side of a tire to tell them that that's a good tire to use in a snowstorm. How does such misleading information end up on such an important part of the car? John Gain blames both the tire industry and government. The federal government doesn't have any regulation. The tire manufacturers sort of can put on the side of a tire whatever they think that they, whatever is appropriate. And that's created a lot of confusion for the public. For an unregulated industry, it appears that you know, they have not done a good job of, of regulating themselves. The coroner's report on Jennifer Jones' fatal accident was sent to Transport Canada. Along with it went this recommendation. Transport Canada was urged to enact regulations and provide performance specifications for winter tires to clear up all the confusion. Peter Keith is a forensic engineer in Calgary. For 15 years, he's been a private consultant investigating car accidents. Before that, for almost a decade, he was chief engineer in the motor vehicle safety branch of Transport Canada. I think that people should really remember that these four pieces of rubber is all that's holding them on the road, and they have to be treated that way. You've got to keep the tire pressure up, you've got to keep, make sure you've got plenty of tread depth, and uh, you've got to have the right tires for the conditions. Given what you know, what do you use on your car? Oh, I use four studded uh, winter tires, and so does my wife. Studded tires all the way around. Yep. Tire studs are little metal posts that you can have inserted into many standard winter tires. It's simple, and it's cheap. Just $20 a tire. Part of Peter Keith's confidence in studded tires comes from research being done in Sweden by his colleague Ole Nordstrom. So we thought we'd pay him a visit. Ole Nordstrom is a specialist in winter tire performance at the Swedish Road and Traffic Research Institute in Linköping, Sweden. The institute does road safety research for the Swedish government, as well as for commercial clients around the world. At a Volvo test track on an abandoned airstrip in the central highlands of Sweden, Nordstrom tested studded tires, winter tires, and all-season radials. All the tires tested were made by a major manufacturer and are standard issue in Canada. There were two tests. The first was designed to determine which tires were best for avoiding side-to-side -side skidding or fishtailing, as happened to Jennifer Jones on the Sea to Sky Highway in BC. The driver attempted to pull around the first blue balloon car and back into his own lane without hitting the second car. And he made it. At 35 kilometers per hour, the driver of the car with all-season radials made the maneuver. When he tried again at 40 kilometers an hour, here's what happened. The car with winter tires squeaked by at 45 kilometers per hour. But at 50 kilometers an hour, here's what happened with the winter tires. Finally, the car with studded tires. It made it, just barely, at 55 kilometers per hour. And he made it. Whoa. The second test was to find out which tires are best when you try to brake on ice, the way Elaine Frimmer did in Barrie, Ontario. This time, the car with studded tires went first. So now, the car with winter tires... C 
considerably longer stopping distance required. Okay, here he comes again, all season radials, achieving a speed of 50 kilometers an hour and breaking at the first pylon. We'll see how long it takes him to stop. Just can you check and see if he achieved the speed? The results of the braking test were consistent with the results of the passing test and reflect what Nordstrom has found in past experiments. The car with studded tires stopped about 10 car lengths down the track from the point where the brakes were applied. The car with winter tires skidded 15 car lengths and the car with all season radials slid 19 car lengths from the point of braking. In spite of the uh ongoing improvement of non-studded winter tires. Still, the studded tire is uh, quite uh, superior under the conditions you have seen here. Today, nearly 80% of Swedes use studded tires in winter. It has cut road accidents by about half and resulted in little or no damage to Sweden's road system, thanks to improvements in how tire studs are made. In this country, Canadians can use studded tires at least part of the year in all provinces except Ontario, where they're still illegal. So what are the folks of Ontario supposed to do? Well, Jackie, perhaps Ontario would be wise to um, develop uh, or to adopt the Swedish innovation, that is the, the new stud, which doesn't damage the roadway and improves winter driving safety. Well, for those who are determined to stay with their all-season radials, what advice is there? There is a new logo, the Mountain and Snowflake logo, which is to be found on uh, some uh, all-season radial tires. Um, it's a Canadian uh, suggestion, actually. Originally, it's been developed uh, and adopted internationally, and it does provide you with some assurance of uh, winter driving safety. Okay, thanks very much. Thank you. And thanks for joining us. That's Marketplace for this week. Good night. Racist. Dangerous. A law unto himself. He makes me furious with the approach that he uses to try to intimidate people and push them around. That's what some people are saying about this man. Are you a bully? Because you can call me a bully. Meet Craig Bromell, the Metro Toronto Police Union boss. The inevitable result is that you'll get police corruption and the citizens lose out.